your girl, Rebel Jones, back again here to give you a little taste of what MLNNYC has to say about Black Lives Matter. That's right, it's living in the process, and today is Hashtag Tuesday. Get your hashtags out and start hashtagging Black Lives Matter. As redundant as it may seem, all the pain that we go through, all the fear that we face, is truly coming from a place. talking about what? Black Lives Matter because they are going to matter every day. And so tune in, subscribe, and we're going to kill it. There's a lot of divisiveness in our community. What happens is a lot of people are afraid to have the freedom. Number one, what that what that freedom entails in our community. <laughs> Feel like they need to, I'm not gonna say bring in, but recruit or have others your, of European descent, you know, believe in their movement for it to be possible. No, we actually need our own people to believe in our movement for it to be possible. <laughs> It's 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 a it's a lifestyle. Black lives have to always matter to you. You know what I'm saying? It can't just matter on certain occasions, but it has to continually be something that matters. And I have to check myself about it because I'm like, you know, I can't. When when we say Black lives matter, every single Black life has to matter, and it can't be categorized. So for me, I felt like you know a lot of Black people are only Black lives matter when other people are killing us, which is true. We're supposed to be in defense of ourselves at all times. You know, we are the ultimate beings and we need to respect each other and our space. So for me, it was like, I had to reflect on that and continually say, you know, Black Lives Matter. And a lot of people are using it as a joke, like, you know, okay, you know, whatever, like, water, water matters, <laughs> chips matter, um, giraffes matter, you know, just, just to keep the comedic value. But there's really nothing to laugh about. But, I, but honestly, on my day-to-day -day basis, I have to check myself on the things or the assumptions that I make or the stereotypes that I um, project onto other people. Like, okay, the ghetto black girl that I used to, like that you may see on the train at night. I had to learn to stop side-eyeing her and realize why she's like that. Why, you know, not, not making assumptions of her lifestyle, but just saying, you know, I can't be judgmental or side-eye her or be like, oh man, she's making all of us look bad. Because at the end of the day, we're a unit. So her life matters just as much as mine, and we're one. So it's not, oh, damn, she's making me look bad, but you know, we're one. So we're doing this together, and I'm not judging you. Your life matters just as much as mine does. And just because I look a certain way or carry myself a, a certain way does not make me better than you, because you might be making better lifestyle choices. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So I needed her, I needed to make that comparison so people understand, you know, her life matters just as much as my life matters. Right. Oh, what can happen? And things have been escalating so quickly from the lack of training, from the years of, you know, media and all kinds of ideas that have said, you know, black men are dangerous, you know, or putting the word black or pairing it with um, big and ugly or, you know, just certain things that um, would attribute to us becoming um, victims in different circumstances, you know, and even in the civil rights movement, even in, there were lives lost. I don't think people realize tons of lives have to be lost. Blood has to be shed at some point for it to be a movement. I walked past a lady the other day in Harlem. I was late to the protest and I was so mad at myself. But I walked past this old woman and she was saying, and I was cracking up, she was like, I love these kids. They're not afraid to die. They gotta be afraid to die for what they believe in because it, it's that serious. And um, the great painter that you guys have up, Aleem Smith, you know, yesterday night, put on uh, Facebook today before I got here. He said, are you, afraid, are you afraid of freedom? And how many of you are afraid of freedom? And I think that's the key component of what it, what it all is. And a lot of people are afraid. Um, and that's why they're not 
they're not involved. Just like some people with the with the bo bus boycott. Yeah. If you look at the Rosa Parks um, documentary, a lot of people were in disagreement. Yeah. And it took a lot for them to be in agreement for a whole year. You get what I'm saying? There were some people, maybe one person from the community rode that bus. But everyone else didn't. Okay. So it's the same thing. A lot of people are afraid of the freedom. They're afraid of making the choices for themselves. And they're afraid of what it takes to make a choice for yourself. Okay, if I, if I go to this protest and something happens, I get arrested. That's me. That's not all of us. You know, it's very, it's a very, we've, we've learned to, we've become divided to the point where we, we're only focused on self. And that's why we lost our community. Because if you look at other communities, if you look at Asian culture, if you look at European culture, it's based on that community. No one really makes decisions for self. It's like, does my decision for self glorify my community? If not, I don't want anything to do with it. Wow. And I think that's where we're failing. It's like, we're, tell we, we're so quick to tell other ble black people, you know, what we should be doing. Well, you should be doing that, or you should have been doing that, and that wouldn't have happened. But in other cases, people do whatever, you know, and they're still, even if you look at um, the guy from what, Stanford, Connecticut, he was in that rape case. He raped a girl and people defended it. You know what I'm saying? People caught him raping a girl and white people defended it. But black people are quick to make excuses for why a white man murdered a black man selling CDs with permission, you know, because, oh, well, he shouldn't have been selling CDs. But white people will defend a rapist, a murderer, a killer because, I That's mean... That's their kind. That's their kind. I can't really say much more. But we haven't had the community that... The only time our community has ever, and I'm going to throw it out there, has ever backed a black man who had did something wrong was OJ. That's the only time that they def we defended our own and said, okay, well, I want, even if it's wrong, I want this person to not be account accountable, you know? So we have to, as a community, unite. Unite, regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to. We have to say, okay, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with your movement. I'll be a part of something else, but I'm still working towards that. So, what's your process um, to get through this Black Lives Matter? Yeah, we can hashtag it and put it on social media. But when does it matter? When do you start your process? stuck here with all their problems and they become your problems I'm like what are all these problems they're not even your problems they're somebody else's problems you know we carry other people's problems everywhere our parents our mothers and our fathers our sisters and brothers and we just carry all this stuff that's not even our own and all this load and it just you know holds you down <laughs>